Well, the new leaner budget has passed both houses, but even the new budget is salted with billions of dollars in good old-fashioned pork. We'll tell you which pet projects survived the budget acts. Then we'll find out what Wall Street thinks of the next phase of the budget battle with Ken Langone, a man who bridges the Wall Street-Washington divide. Then an inside look at the software business, a business that today is undergoing some radical consolidation. Mark Hoffman, chief executive of software giant Sybase, joins us on today's edition of Inside Opinion. Good day, everyone, and welcome to a Monday edition of Inside Opinion. Welcome also to our international viewers who join us every day at this time. Well, the Republican budget has passed both houses of Congress and is now headed for the conference committee and then on to the White House. This is a new leaner budget, but one taxpayer group thinks this budget looks suspiciously like all the other budgets that Congress has passed, with about $46 billion in projects that most taxpayers neither want nor need. Joining us now to tell us about the pork that will not die is Ralph DiGennaro. He is the head of the Taxpayers for Common Sense financial picture. So far, there has been no agreement. Uh, we'll get to some other concepts about the budget very shortly. Ralph, thanks for being with us. Appreciate you coming by. Good afternoon. All right, what's wrong with this budget? Well, this budget is, um, does make some cuts, but unfortunately, it continues too much business as usual. Our organization, Taxpayers for Common Sense, this morning released, just in time for Halloween, a report showing that 13 federal programs that were killed have actually come back to life. It's like one of those old horror movies where you kill them and they keep coming back to <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, you're calling this the budget of the living dead. Uh, what are the most egregious examples uh, of the pork you say exist in this particular paper? Well, we have picked for our Zombie of the Year award the B-2 Stealth Bomber. This bomber program costs more than its weight in gold. Each B-2 bomber costs more than its weight in gold. It's so expensive, even the Pentagon doesn't want it. Congress passed a law in 1992 and 1993 saying, uh, stop, we're only going to build 20 bombers, and that's it. Now, this fall, Congress is in the budget buying two more B-2 bombers, and they're going to build 20 more. And that's going to cost taxpayers $30 billion. That's let me, why we... Let me just ask you, Ken, though, from the perspective, I, and I know, you know, you get these kind of conspiracy theories about the military-industrial complex and all that cropping up from time to time, but... To soften the blow uh, to the defense industry, which has been shrinking rather radically over the last several years, do you think Congress maybe, in this case, might be well-intended to keep some companies from really facing some rather dire times as a result of the B-2 being eliminated or cut back? Well, I don't recall this congressional majority running on a platform that said that it was the government's responsibility to guarantee jobs. I thought this new congressional majority was about cutting government, cutting the waste, and ending business as usual. And it's, it's not just the fault of the Republicans, of course. Both parties are continuing too much business as usual, and the B-2 is a good example. All right, what are some of the other examples? I mean, that's a couple billion dollars. You see that there's $46 billion worth of pork in this particular budget. What also is uh, egregious? Uh, um, just to get our facts right, our report says that if the 13 programs in our report had been killed and, and left dead, taxpayers would have saved 46 billion dollars over the last 15 years okay and if they were if they were if they, we didn't if we killed them today we could save another 58 billion dollars in coming years so our figure did not pertain to this particular budget all right so give us a few more examples here of what's kind of scary in this picture well military base closures you know we have this base closure process where we have this big um, process where the commission recommends the list to close and Congress passes it and the president approves it and everything like that what we found out is that military bases that were closed aren't closing. They just changed the name, and sometimes the Navy turns them over to the Air Force, or the uh, NASA turns them over to the Navy or whatever, but the military bases aren't closing. And there's good examples like Carswell Air Force Base in Texas and Moffett uh, Field in California. That's one example. Have you, in your studies, been able to find out whether some of the most vocal uh, proponents of budget cutting actually directed some pet projects back to their own uh, districts? Um, yeah, I think um, it's certainly true that pork knows no party, and, and, uh, and I'm afraid that the, the new bunch is not that different from the old bunch when it comes to, to pork. Um, in particular, the um, uh, state of California, which is some of the most vocal proponents of cutting waste, is also the uh, state that uh, continues to receive a lot of some of these most wasteful uh, projects. Any particular congressmen who stand out in the bunch? Well. Um, we could talk about Congressman John Doolittle, who represents an area, a district near Sacramento. 
Um, he re represents a district that has in it the Auburn Dam, which is a proposed dam that would cost the rest of us $700 million that most people say is a bad deal. In fact, the House of Representatives killed this project overwhelmingly by a big vote in 1992. And now Congressman Doolittle, who's the new Republican chairman of the uh, committee that authorizes dams, wants to revive this project. How much is that? You said $700 million going forward? $700 yeah. million dollars for the rest of us. And oh. this is a dam that California newspapers have editorialized against. All right, now let's get back to the B-2 for a second. Uh, um, obviously, there are a couple of companies that stand to benefit from its uh, ongoing production. Which Congress people were most vocal in their support for the project? Well, there's, there's a number, and I wouldn't want to name too many in, lest I leave somebody off. Um, I think, though, that it's bipartisan. I can assure you of that. Um, the B-2, everybody knows from TV commercials, uh, this is the bat plane with that distinctive bat wing shape. Um, the problem is that we're all paying for this. It, it isn't funny because it's costing the rest of us a lot of money. All right, we have to stop there. We appreciate you coming by. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.